Hello, and welcome to Friday's Thought for the Day. My name is Jane, and I'm an ordinand, training for ministry in the Church of England. Imagine the scene. A group of pupils are assembled for a PE lesson. Obviously not something that's happening in schools at the moment, but perhaps something that you can remember from your own school days. The team captains for the rounders game have been appointed, and now it's time to pick teams. The best players are picked first. Those who are particularly fast runners, or always score a rounder, or are great at catching people out. And then just a few people are left. The people like me, who aren't that great at sport and in all honesty aren't going to be much of an asset to the team. It's okay, I'm over it now, but I did used to hate that team picking process. Today I want to spend just a few minutes thinking about team. When we think about Jesus' ministry on earth and those three years when he travelled around teaching and performing all kinds of miracles, I guess we think of his team as being the group of 12 disciples who shared his life, But were they the only team members? Today's Gospel reading from the Church of England lectionary is Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. The beginning of this passage describes how Jesus appointed not 12, but 70 for a particular task. They were to go in pairs to every town and place that Jesus was going to visit. It was their job to prepare the way for him, to whet people's appetites, to give people a glimpse of what, or rather who, was to come. Why did Jesus need to send a larger number out on this particular mission? Well, Jesus says to the seventy, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. There's a huge task to be accomplished, and Jesus needs a big team on the job. In fact, the implication is that the seventy need to be praying for even more people to join the workforce. If you can remember back to days before COVID-19, you might recall that there were fears that in British fields and orchards there might be a similar situation. Fruit rotting on the trees and vegetables decaying in the fields as the seasonal workforce from abroad was deterred from coming here to work. What a tragedy it is when good produce goes to waste, just for lack of pickers. Well, Jesus obviously isn't talking about apple picking. He's talking about a harvest of people those who are ready to respond to God's love and join his worldwide family, people who just need an opportunity to encounter Jesus. In fact, Jesus himself says that the fields are white. There's a bumper harvest. The problem is that the labourers are few. So who are the labourers? Well, definitely the 70 that Jesus sent out on that particular day. But what about today? Whose job is it to do the harvesting now? Well, when it comes to serving Jesus by bringing in the harvest, I'd like to suggest that everyone's on the team. And no one's discriminated against because they're not sufficiently young or sufficiently clever or sufficiently eloquent. Every believer, every member of Christ's worldwide family is on the team. And that includes you and me. Evangelism has become a dirty word in some circles. Perhaps it conjures up images of slick televangelists or someone standing on a soapbox shouting, But the truth is, that whatever you call it, Jesus has asked all of us to share the good news about him with those who are just waiting to hear. And it doesn't have to involve a soapbox. It can be something as simple as telling a friend who's suffering that you'll remember him in your prayers, or recommending Tracy, our vicar's online services, to someone who might find it easier to watch at home than to step inside a church. Or it could be faithfully ringing a few friends who are isolated at the moment and showing them Jesus' love in action. All of these very ordinary scenarios could be significant in someone's journey to faith. And of course, there may also come times when people want to take it a bit further. Perhaps a friend asks us to explain why church is so important to us, or why we bother to pray at all, or how our faith has helped us during these strange times. And then, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can share a little of our story with them, and encourage them to take another step in their journey towards Jesus. So when it comes to picking teams, you're already in. You're already on Jesus' team, and there's work to do. There's a harvest to be brought in, and there's no time to waste. Let's pray that this week God gives us the opportunity to share a little of our faith story with one friend who doesn't yet know Jesus. I will if you will. Well, take care.